Okay, we are now live. <laughs> Today we have a very special guest and we are going to talk about being or becoming a registered nurse in the United States, especially for immigrants. And how much do nurses make per year here in the United States and why almost many immigrants want to become nurses in the first place. So in order to do that, we have brought uh, the person who is in that particular field, my friend uh, who is a registered nurse here in the great state of Ohio. Welcome, Edna. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me again. <laughs> yeah, so let us start for yourself to introduce yourself. All right, my name is Edna Ngoi. I'm from Tanzania. I'm now a registered nurse with a bachelor's degree. I've been a nurse since 2013. 2013. Yes. So almost eight years. Yeah. That is yeah. a very big uh, experience to be a uh, registered nurse for over eight years yeah uh by saying that you have been a registered nurse for uh eight years that means there is a time for bachelor degree and the entire life overall how long have you been here in the united states i've uh, been here in the united states Ju this july 31st will be 20 years wow almost 20 years <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it in August, I'm going to be just 13. <laughs> wow. I'm old folk. <laughs> uh, we are going to have a lot of questions uh, as a registered nurse and just overall as immigrant in general. Uh, before I start directly is going to uh, becoming a registered nurse, you said you have been here 20 years. If you don't mind, can you share when did you come and what way did you use to come to america uh, when i came i came as a exchange student yes uh the program called uh, work and travel that we apply when i was home so you 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 you're supposed to be a student still it's for students like all over the world they come to like summer camps and all different places like they come, you come here like for a cultural uh, exchange, you come and work and experience the culture. Then when your program is done, you are given like a month, I think it was a month, you can travel wherever you want to go, and then you go back. So when I came, I the, my first job was to work in amusement park. Yes. So I came away from Tanzania, I went to amusement park in Connecticut, and it was called Kwasi, Kwasi Amusement Park. So when I went there, I was a ride operator. So me and other people that came from Tanzania and some people from Russia, England, like it was like all exchange students in the <laughs> company. Yes. So we worked for from July until no, October. Then, you know, around the time the parks are closed now because yes. the weather start changing. Then there, because our program was supposed to be ending in uh, December, they said, if you want, you can go back home, or if you want, you can go somewhere else. And they found another place we went, so we went to um, Vermont. In Vermont, we worked as housekeepers until November. Then came back to New York. Then the person in New York was like, oh, please, you can go to Ohio, so, so. But he was trying to convince us to stay and go for school, and he said Ohio was cheaper. So. <laughs> yeah, so when we say you came as exchange student for just, I know, but for the audience, for them to know, was exchange student is a primary, secondary, uh, master's, bachelor, what was the level of education when you came here at that particular time? Uh, at that time, I graduated from six. Cause from six, I which is you finishing high school? Yeah, so it was high school. But it was even people who finish all level, A level. So it's high school students. The program was for high school students. Uh, yeah, then. There is a, one of the difference uh, between you and I at the age to come to America, number one, but uh, the philosophy behind for me was coming in America was my dream, was my plan and everything, whatever. But for you as high school, did you plan purposely 
going to America is part of my dream. So the exchange student was an opportunity which you are planning for. Oh, when you come here, you say, anyway, uh, let me think about other opportunities. Or did you come purposely to excel here in America? No, I did not. <laughs> I, it was my dream. It was my dad's dream, but it was never my dream. <laughs> it just happened, like, because when we grew up, my dad, he, he owned his own uh, car shop, like, within Tanzania we call garage, garage, yeah. but he owned a car shop, like, fix cars, buy cars, use cars, like, anything involved with car. He was like a hustler, let me say. <laughs> then he ha he also, like, have a license to be auctioneer. So, on the weekends, uh, he, he used to work so hard, but on the weekend, he had time for his children. So we go out, we go to picnic, we go to the movies. One time we went to when I was in form five, I think. Yeah, I was in form five. Like it was a, I think it was December holiday, like a um, break. Yeah. We went to somewhere. I think it's Nazimoya or something. That, like uh, they call Macau Macuya Scout. Yeah. There was some. The some people, Scout Yeah, they, they, it's very big. Yes, you know how like the people if they here they in the summer they have like uh, amusement park you go to maybe such flood and stuff over there they have something like they bring them like seasonally they pack their stuff they pull their rides and stuff for a little bit for after months and they move to another location so at that time there was those kind of stuff going on there then we went there and then we were having fun we were like in a ride then my dad and my stepmom were sitting down drinking, talking. This lady, she was a scout leader. She came in, they started talking. Then I came when we done we were, after we done with the rider, we came like, oh my God, was like, oh, the rider was this way. So then we went there, then he's like, I guess they were talking and she said she was a scout. I guess they were just going around to make sure everything is safe and stuff. And she's like, my dad was like, and she was talking, was like, at night, uh, this man here, yeah, she's a scout. I'm like, oh, I was a scout in high school. I was a scout in high school, all yeah. A-level. <laughs> then she's like, wow. And she started talking, she's like, oh, yeah, we have programs going on and so and so. We send people to Africa, uh, I mean, Europe and Canada and America. And she said, now we have like a trip going on. Like, you know how they chase the... Uh, Mwenge, like uh, yeah, the Mwenge. the torch, national torch, whatever <laughs> those, yeah, all over <laughs> yeah. Tanzania. So there was one going on, and they were going to Kilimanjaro, and she says she's like, oh yeah, usually we go, and I'm like, huh? And my dad is like, Edna, are you interested? I'm like, ah, I don't know. He's like, just take a number. So I I used to have a cell phone, the huge cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> Nokia, a flip one. You yeah, know I you remember know. those one. That was huge. So I took a number. Then we went. Uh, we went home. Like um, that was. I think it was Saturday or Sunday. It was in the weekend. Then if you, uh, like following uh, a week, my dad was like, "Oh, okay. Uh, talk to the uh, woman, and you can see and go see what the program's about, and uh, and come and let me know." So we made an appointment. We met at somewhere called Lego. I think Lego. I think there's a place called Lego in Dar es Salaam. Yeah. There's a Lego. Yeah, yeah, I, I know that place, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, and there was another guy now, the one who uh, was arranging uh, the programs. So, so I went there, I met him, and he started talking about the program. He said there's a program for au pair. Au pair, I think they call. Like you go to an, uh, like a foreign country, you can go be a nun, and you, you teach them culture. Like, so, like the American kids or European kids, like me, I go to be an au pair. I teach them about my culture, even sometimes you can teach them about your language and you help them with homeworks, but the family is responsible to take you to school, like a short course, like a one year course or something like that. So he said, apply for that. And then after a while, I guess I don't know what was going on. And he said, you know what? I have another idea. What about you apply for this? So then he told us to apply for the, um, the, the other program. Yeah, the one to come to America. Yeah, me and my sister. So then, after all, then they send the application to whatever the company is, and people, I guess, they come and choose, and they like, they according to a biograph and everything, they see who they like, and they chose me and my sister, the company that we came to work for. So they chose me and my sister, which they usually say is rare. They usually choose one, or they don't choose, but both of us got chosen. Then 
then the guy told us, okay, these are the calls and so and so, and then we apply for the course. Then uh, my dad was like, okay, do you want to go? I'm like, I don't know, that's too far. <laughs> <laughs> but I was Man. like, you know, yeah. I was, do you have the money? This is a lot of money. It's like, don't worry. <laughs> so, you know, you know, every time you see your dad is complaining, he's broke and broke. So you think like, maybe he don't have the money to pay. But it's like, don't worry about it. Just go do the application, follow the process and stuff. Then she told us to uh, apply for passport and everything. And that's how it happened and we came. But I really wasn't like, I was never thinking. My dream was like, at that time after high school, all I'm thinking is like, oh, I want to go to University of Dar es Salaam. I want to be a lawyer and so on. But the American never came in my mind. It just happened. <laughs> so uh, when he, let's go now to uh, become uh, a registered nurse. That will be the most interesting part. 